So how many presser feet did your sewing machine come with? We all have a few that we look at and think, oh my gosh, what is that for? I'll never use it and tuck it away. Well, if you have a walking foot, you need to use it. And I'm going to show you the best ways to use your walking foot. And you are going to be amazed at the improvement in sewing that you'll see. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise and I love my walking foot and I use it so many times and I get a lot of comments and questions about what do you do with a walking foot? Well, I am going to show you my five best ways. These are my favorite ways to use a walking foot and it is so effective. I'm ready to quilt and I'm going to use my walking foot and the little arm fits over the thumb screw that holds the needle and this goes around the shank where the presser foot fits. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove my regular presser foot that I just use for standard sewing and I'm going to put my walking foot on. And remember the difference with this are these feed dogs. Can you see those on the bottom? See how they go up and down? That's what pulls the upper fabric of the quilt sandwich along at the same rate as the bottom fabric. That way everything moves together, you're less apt to get bunching and wrinkles and all those other problems that can occur. And I do, there we go, get that tucked in there. Move my threads to the back. Now, Probably one of the most amazing things about it is what a diverse foot it is, how much it can do with so many different kinds of fabrics. From the super lightweight, sheer, silky fabrics that want to wiggle and squiggle around and you can hardly hold on to it, the walking foot's going to take care of that for you and feed it through evenly. But what about if you've got fabric that has a nap or fur fabric or fuzzy minky fabrics and things of that nature? Try your walking foot. You will be amazed at how well that this walking foot is going to work for you. But have you thought about your rag quilting? Yes, all those layers of flannel, corduroy. How about denim? This foot can do all that. And I'm going to show you exactly how to put your walking foot to good use so that you are going to use it more frequently and have much better results in your quilting. So the first thing I want to show you is the easiest way to use your walking foot for quilting, for finishing a quilt, and doing an easy quilt design with your walking foot. No, it's not the straight line. That actually takes a little more time and effort. I'm talking about the curvy, wavy quilting design. You're gonna love this. So take a peek at this one. Now, I am just going to do some very easy, basic sewing uh, today with some, some quilting. I have my quilt sandwich all together. I glued it. So I have my backing and my batting and my quilt top. And just by applying the spray based, everything is put together. I don't have to worry about it falling apart, coming loose, or sewing over a pin. Now there is a video how to, to apply the spray based, and I will link that above. But right now what I want to do is get this quilted. So ordinarily, you can choose any number of a different different styles of of quilting with a walking foot. A lot of times folks will just take a straight line, but that is not the easiest for a beginner. Beginners generally are learning how to sew straight, and while that sounds silly, there there is a challenge there to not get it wavy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the easiest, and that's a wavy line, because that kind of comes natural. So I start at the corner and just a tad off the corner. And what I do is I make my stitch length just a little bit longer, and you can read about the uh, walking foot, what you may or may have to do with your tension to make those adjustments. And if yours didn't come, your machine didn't come with a walking foot, they are available. And I have those links down below as well. So what I'm going to do is just sew some long curves. And I'm going to go from corner to corner between my charms. This is just a basic charm square quilt. It takes 80 charm squares. 
and actually it's 81 because this one I did square and it's 9 by 9. Now I do make an effort to kind of hit that intersection where all of the corners come together. It reinforces the corners and it kind of keeps me on a straight line. And if you stop, and I stopped with my needle up there, and I do recommend that when you stop, you stop with your needle down. One of the advantages of sewing diagonally is you don't have quite so much fabric on the inside of your sewing machine because you have the diagonal down the center is your longest dimension, your longest distance. So what you're going to roll up over here really is just the corner. So we just are going to kind of tool along here and do some swirly lines, curvy lines, sorry, curly, swervy, whatever that word might be or whatever it means to you. And there's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of being relatively consistent so everything kind of sort of looks the same. So I'm just going to get to the end of this row and show you what we've done. As you can see, I'm using a light thread on top. Because there's so much low volume fabric, I wanted to use a cream color thread rather than um, anything with a color because I didn't want the color on the low volume. Um, I could have certainly used a color here and then just switched threads out, which is certainly doable. The other thing is I used a gray on the back, so it's not quite white. It's not going to be as stark. It'll blend a bit better with those colors. So do you see just these long wavy lines? They look really nice. And if one's a little deeper and, you know, this is a shallow wave, this is deeper, that's okay because it's all going to look the same. We're never going to make two this exactly alike simply because that just isn't possible. Uh, you know, we can try and, and we can replicate, but there's always going to be just a little smidge of it off. So I go ahead and go into it knowing that it's all going to be a little bit different. And so I'm going to do my curves. I'm going to go down this row. And we're just going to keep swinging around back and forth. And you know what I forgot are my quilting gloves. But fortunately, this is a very lightweight quilt and it's a small quilt. So I shouldn't have any problem. But it does help me to guide. I, I'm finding myself grabbing this with my hands. And with my quilting gloves, it's a whole lot easier to get a grip. So when I maybe change to the next row, I'm going to grab those because I do notice that I'm missing them. And they do come in handy. There are a couple different kinds that you can get. And I've tried a few and there's not a huge difference between them. It's just a matter of what fits for you, what you like. I like the textured finger fingertips because that way it gives me a, a better grip. And they're all stretchy, which is kind of nice because it gives a bit of support to your hand so you don't get quite so tired. Um, you know, giving that extra squeeze, it sort of helps you endure some long hours of quilting. Of course, I don't go quite that long. And here we go. We're back to the end of this row. Let me grab my gloves. I'll be right back. I have my gloves on. The tips have, like I said, it's a little bit of that um, coating, that plastic coating that they use or rubber, whatever. And it sort of makes them look a little dirty. They're not, but it is a great little uh, protection for your hands as well as gripper. It just makes it a lot easier to use. Now you notice my, my swerves here, they look really good. So I'm just going to pick up on the next one. And I'm just notice how I'm just using my hands to steer my fabric and it's gentle. I'm not doing really long, sharp, or I should say short, sharp turns. And if you do have to stop, always make sure your needle is down. I do try to stop at the point, but I couldn't quite get that far. And I'm just going to speed it up a little. And 
and we'll get moving. And I love that my quilt sandwich stays in place so well with the spray based. And you can see how everything is laying nice and smooth on the back and no problems, no puckers. It's perfect. So let me go ahead and finish this half of the quilt and then I will turn it over and show you how we do the other side. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and finish quilting this and then I'm going to show you a finished quilt. And that's it. Everything is quilted, but I just want to show you how the back looks, but just how these wavy lines all work together. They look wonderful. You've seen how easy wavy line quilting can be. So let's take a look at straight line. Now, we're used to seeing channel quilting, rows and rows of straight line quilting across from side to side, but I want to show you something a little different. How do you do straight line quilting with a half square triangle? Or how do you quilt diamonds? I want to show you some ideas of other things you can quilt with your walking foot, simply using a straight line. I'm going to pull my bottom thread up and that just keeps you from getting any knots underneath when you start your sewing. So I'm going to pull that up through. There we go. And I'm just going to tuck that thread over here. I'm not going to put my gloves on just yet. I want to make sure I can get around this corner and get started before because gloves it's hard to handle the thread so I usually do the first few stitches and get myself started before I get into any uh, any glove action so I'm going to make sure my needle is going down right where I want it and it's going to kind of do a back tack here okay there we go all right so I'm started now I can put my gloves on and we're ready to go. So I'm at about a half inch from the seam and so I'm going to watch this spot right here. And I need to kind of keep that distance the same as I'm going around in order to have a consistent uh, quilting line. And I have my quilt turn. I'm going to pull this thread taut and trim it off. There we go. And again, I just want to make sure this stays flat because I'm turning my quilt and it's tight here in the middle. There's more of a chance that I can get, I'm sorry, I have a thread stuck to me. There's more of a chance that I can maybe twist the fabric underneath. I just need to be really careful with that. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to lay my hands out like this. And as I'm doing it, I put a bit of pressure just to hold all the layers of the quilt in place as I'm sewing. This is a great way to make sure you don't get any tucks on the back and it just keeps everything nice and smooth. So as you're quilting, you get a good even feed. So let me go ahead and go to the next corner. And I'm just going to sew all the way through. quite get to the corner without adjusting my hand so I'm just going to do it very carefully because you don't want to you know turn yourself at an angle as you're sewing in the middle here you want it to be nice and straight so I'm just kind of making sure I'm going in the right direction oh, I got off just a little bit there go down here to the seam and we're going to turn it around again. I'm, I'm on my second round at this point, and I'm going to go to the next corner and work my way there. I'll go ahead and do this turn, and then when I come back, we're going to be going off the edges. We're pretty much done the biggest part of the, the uh, center square, and then we'll go to the outer edges, and I'll show how that works. All right, I'm getting ready to do my first outside corner, and I'm just going to start right at the edge of my quilt because this is where the quilting is done on the diamonds. And so when I finished, I just sewed right out to that edge, and now I'm going to come this way, and I'm just going to go back and forth, and I'll show you how easy this is going to be. Okay. 
all we're going to do is sew from one side to the other. It's all straight stitching. There's no turning. And I'm just holding my fabric nice and taut so I won't get any wrinkles. And this is for the wrinkles underneath. If I just sew without, you know, or excuse me, if I quilt without giving this a little bit of a stretch, I'm concerned I might get a few pleats or tucks underneath, and this just helps hold the fabric right where it needs to be. All right, I'm down to my last block. going to sew right off the edge just like that. Now what makes this much easier on this end of things is that I can just cut my threads and I'll get back and do that a little closer after and then just pull my fabric back and do the corner again. So I have three or four rows that I need to do this on. Each one gets shorter so this is why I like doing the middle first, because by the time I get out to the outer edge, I'm nearly finished. The hard work is over and it just quilts up so easy. I wanted to show you up close how this quilting looks, and I think it's wonderful. This is a great way to quilt a half square triangle pattern like this that's set on an angle. And so many of them are, depending on, you know, the design you go with. But this is an easy way to do it because you don't have to, you know, be right on a seam. You're just sort of close to a seam, and it allows for a lot of flexibility. I used a um, diagonal diamond quilting, and it's with a walking foot. Straight quilting, nothing tricky about it. We're just sewing at an angle, and it turned out great. I have my lines drawn, I have my filament thread in that you can hardly see, and I'm going to use my walking foot and just start stitching diagonally and following the lines that I drew. This is a small quilt, so this will go quickly. And I just thought these diamond shapes Quilting lines would look pretty cool on here. So my quilt is spray basted. Everything's holding up well. We're just moving along. I'll keep going and I'll catch up with you when I get closer to the end. I have my first row of diagonal lines quilted in. You can hardly see with this thread, but it's when you look at it from a bit of a distance because then you've got the dimension of the fabric where you see the, uh, the quilting. So it, it is really a fun way using this filament thread. You can see the other lines that are already it in. So see here's a line and here's a line. The quilting is done on a diagonal so we've got a diamond and it looks wonderful. It's just such a fun look. Let's not forget about rag quilting. That's a great way to use your walking foot for straight line quilting. You have all those thick heavy seams, especially if you're using flannel or denim, corduroy, wool, whatever you decide to use for your rag quilt. You want to be able to keep those layers together as you're sewing so that it ends up even at the end of the seam. And then when you're putting your strips together, you have all those seam allowances that you need to sew over, which even doubles it further. Your walking foot can do this. Just watch. These are my first two blocks I'm going to sew together. You can see they both have the X's. And I'm going to put them with the seam to the front like this. So my back fabric is here and my front fabric is on top. So I'm just going to line these up. And again, walking foot, size 16 needle, lengthen my stitch just a bit. I, 
I don't do just a, a half inch seam. I do a very generous half inch, so it's probably um, closer to 5 eighths, maybe. I don't think I go quite as much as 3 quarters, but I like having just a little bit extra so that as I'm clipping, I can clip, you know, make some good size clips and not worry about cutting into my seam. I'm going to hold the two ends together while I'm sewing, make sure I stay on track. And just let the walking foot draw that fabric together. And so we're going to line this up. Sew that open. This is a lot to handle. It can be quite heavy and bulky. And it can be a lot to run through your machine. So by doing it, you know, in, in smaller chunks, I find it just works better that way. You've just finished a quilt top and you're ready to get it quilted. So you get your backing, you pull out your batting, but oh no, it's a couple inches short. What do you do? Don't go to the store. Grab some pieces left over from the last quilt you made. We are gonna put some batting pieces together and I'm gonna show you how. This will really save you in a pinch. So I'm going to put my pieces of batting right up close to each other. Don't leave a space. Bunch it. Don't overlap it. And when I say bunch it, just tuck it, tuck it close together. And you want to aim it down the center of the presser foot. So I'm just going to line these up and let the walking foot do the work. If I find myself getting a bit off center, I can just raise my presser foot and adjust it. And I may come in back here and just pull that along a little bit. If I notice that it gets a little bunchy, and sometimes um, that can happen just if a bit of the batting gets caught underneath in the back as it's being fed along. And here we go. Now, sometimes your batting um, has low points, and that's you can see throughout the you know the pieces. It's not always a hundred percent consistent because of the way this is made. Um, it's just the nature of the bees, and so you just work with it. And if you have a spot that's a little on the low end, I'm noticing I do have to pull this one along for whatever reason. This batting, maybe because it's thinner. Um, doesn't want to pull evenly and then it bunches a little here. But I'd rather have it close together than spread apart. And then once I'm done, I'll show you. And because I'm using my hand behind the pressure foot to give it just a little tug, and I'm not really pulling it, I'm just keeping it taut so it doesn't have a chance to get bundled up back there and hold the process down. Okay, so we want to keep these. Now, I did have these cut uneven. Um, I cut it off the ends of the batting that I had to trim my primary piece off, and the ends weren't quite the same size, but that's okay. I can work around that. So I'm getting these a little close together. So we're just about down to the end. And you want to make sure that your thread matches your batting. Because if there's any place where you're going to see through the fabric, if you have light fabric, um, then the stitching can become very visible. And we don't want that to happen. So I think I can get some light on this. It is hard to see. Is that Does that work for you? And you can see the zigzag. So on the front, I don't have a lump. It just joins it together nicely. And if we look on the back, it's the same. Oh, you can actually see the stitching better on the back, which makes sense because the front um, it tends to have more on the, on the top where the bottom is being pushed through. It flattens it out. So you can see those stitches there. It works really, really well. So now I'm going to take this piece and add it to my larger piece, and then my batting will be um, at, the, at the right size that I need. Now, the other thing that I do is I will 
attempt to line this seam up with a seam in the quilt. And it's not as hard as you'd think if you, you know, have your batting cut a good five or six inches larger than your quilt. That gives you plenty of room to play with it. This one I have probably 10 inches. So that gives me some flexible room. And what I'll do is I'll line these up with my nine patch blocks. And the nine patches are all going to have a quilt line through them. So I know that that will adhere um, and keep keep this seam well together. I'm always concerned if this is in the middle of a block versus along a seam that during wash or heavy use, you know, this can get pulled apart. Now I can pull this and it's not going anywhere and that's great. But over time, things wear down and this can become a problem. So I always try to, you know, look at the most practical way um, that's also efficient, that's going to, you know, keep this intact for a long period. Now that you've quilted your quilt, you're ready to do the final finish and add the binding. That's right, you can do that with a walking foot too. It holds the layers together as you're sewing your binding on, but you can also do decorative stitching in order to secure your binding. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to use my walking foot. And my quilts turned out beautiful. I love this, I hope you do too. So I'm just going to hold this in place. I have my buttonhole stitch ready to go. And I keep it on the smaller side simply because it's just to secure this edge. I don't need it to come all the way out. I just want to have just a little bit that comes through that gives it some interest to look at, but it also uh, secures everything well. Now, as I'm sewing, like I said, I'm going to be just right inside that fold, and I'm going to go... This stitch goes, let's see, so it comes two forward, and then it goes two to the side. It follows those two back and then two forward. So it just repeats this all the way through, and I'll let you take a look at it here in just a minute. And if you take this side of your presser foot, if you have an open foot, and just line it right up along that edge, you're going to get a nice straight line. I think we can see there we go I think you can see that and you can see how it goes along and then it comes up that's a great way to do your binding and it looks wonderful on the back and see how it just catches along that back edge when I reach my corner I'm just going to make sure everything looks good on the back and I have my pins in place so I'm going to sew right up to my pin and I'm double checking with my finger to make sure that my binding is right where I want it to be. Okay, so we're going to come right up into the corner. And so I'm going to sew just past here so when I come down, I'll be going right along that edge. So I'm going to put it right there and then I'm going to turn and you can see that my needle is coming down that side and I'm going to pull this down and sew this way getting close to where that pin is so I just need to be really careful and I'm going to come down the corner and pull that pin up I'll sew down a couple inches so I can fold that over and show you how it looks all right, let me go ahead and grab this and see how we went around. It got a little thick on that side, but that's okay. It holds it nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. You have the fold here. You have the fold here. And when the binding lays flat, see how you get that nice square edge, that nice corner? It's a great way to do your binding. All right, let me go ahead and finish this quilt, and I think we're going to be done. So did you know that you could do all that with your walking foot? Have you done many of those techniques before? I do hope you try them. It's a fabulous tool and it can be so helpful and make a lot of jobs easier. So next time you look in your drawer and you find a walking foot laying there and you're not sure what to do with, 
now you know. And if you don't have one, you might want to consider getting one because they are terrific. They come in universal size as well that will fit most machines. Well, thank you all for being here, for hanging in here till the end. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a thing or two. Now go get your walking foot and let's do some quilting.